Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. Um, in this video we will do some revision on GCSE topics and we're starting with the topic of solving linear equations. Uh, as always, for more help with your GCSE or A-level maths, do check out Hegarty Maths on YouTube or uh, at, ha at Hegarty Maths on Twitter. Now, this particular video is for students revising GCSE, requires some background knowledge. I'm not going to explain every aspect of, of these topics, but I'm going to guide you through the important um, ideas that come up when revising for an exam. Uh, my students are revising AQA Unit 3, but this work should be applicable to most GCSE topics. So let's start straight with examples. Example 1. We are asked to solve for x, that means find x, in the following linear equation. Just to remind you what linear is, it means the power of the unknown, the x or whatever you're solving for, is only to the power of 1. It's not a squared, etc. Now, I want you to lay out your working exactly like this for every type of question. I don't want you to skip work and I don't want you to rush, otherwise you'll make small mistakes. 4x subtract 3 is equal to 12. Okay, we're using the balance method here. What we're going to do is we're going to add 3 to both sides of the equation. Write down what you're doing. You're adding 3. That way you would get 4x. Um, this would now be 0 and you would get is equal to 15. 4 lots of x are 15. So to get 1 lot of x you divide by 4. So x is therefore 15 divided by 4. Now there is absolutely no harm whatsoever leaving your answer in fractional terms. In fact, higher GCSE topics and at A level, it's preferable to leave it like this rather than, than to round. However, if you wanted to uh, decimalize this, this would then turn out to be x is equal to 3.75. Now one thing to notice, all my equals is are in line down the page and I finish off with my final answer which I will underline for the examiner to show them what I did. Now always check your work, okay, so this is the solution, you need to check it. Now 4 times 3.75, if we were to substitute this back in, on your calculator 4 times 3.75 is 15 and 15 take away 3 is equal to 12. I know I've got the right answer, that's my check. So make sure you uh, lay out exactly like this. Okay, next question, solve for x. Now I've put this one in here, as a lot of times, uh, when there's a linear equation equal to zero, students suddenly freeze. It's the same idea. Um, let's use the balance method, let's subtract five off both sides. Therefore I would get three x is equal to 0 subtract 5, which is negative 5. I've got 3 lots of x is equal to negative 5, so I divide both sides by 3, and I would get that x is equal to negative 5 over 3, Okay, which is the same thing as negative 5 thirds. Now, students would like to decimalise that, and they would get, if they did this, and you shouldn't really write this down, they would get negative 1.6 recurring. It's nicer to leave your answer as a fraction like this, as it is accurate. Do not write whatever you do, negative uh, 1.6, unless you are told to give your answer to a certain number of decimal places. Again, let's check our work. 3 multiplied by negative 5 over 3. Well, 3 multiplied by negative 5 over 3, um, that's like 3 over 1 times this. The 3s would cancel and we get negative 5. Negative 5 plus 5 is equal to 0. I know I've done it right. Next question, example 3. 6 subtract 7x is equal to 11. Now, a lot of the time students uh, fall up here and they go wrong here. So I'm going to show you two ways that you could do this question. One way down this side, and I will show you another way down this side. Now what students uh, can do here is they can subtract six off both sides in this case, and they would get negative seven x is equal to five. And then they could divide by negative seven, 
x is equal to 5 divided by negative 7, which is simply negative 5 over 7. And that would be their answer. Now, what confuses students is probably this line here. Either they forget that this is negative 7 and just divide by 7 here, or when they come to this fraction here, they get confused. 5 divided by negative 7, well, that's just negative 5 sevenths. They get confused between these two lines and think they've done a mistake. But this is right. But to avoid that mistake, we could do a different set of operations. But starting at the start again, what if we decided we don't like subtract 7x? What if we added 7x to both sides? Then I'd get 6 is equal to 11 plus 7x. Then I could subtract 11 off both sides, and I would get that 7x is equal to 5. It's equal to negative 5, sorry. And then dividing by 7, x would therefore be negative 5 divided by 7, which is again, x is equal to negative 5 sevenths. And that tends to be easier to sit with students rather than divided by negative, although you see you get the same answer both ways. Now, either way you get the answer, underline it for the examiner to tell them that here's your answer and check it. Now, 6, you'd have a 6. If you sub this back in, you'd have 6. Now, negative 7 multiplied by negative 5 over 7, well, a negative and a negative multiply uh, become a positive, and you would simply get uh, plus 5. And that adds to 11, and you know you've done it right. Example 4, solve for x here. x is on both sides, make this slightly more complicated. We've got 4 take away x is equal to 5x plus 1. Easiest thing to do, probably, would be to add x to both sides. So we would have 4 is equal to 6x plus 1. Then, uh, then subtract this one off both sides. So we would get 3 is equal to 6x and divide both sides by 6, and we would get x is equal to 3 over 6. Rearranging it so the x is first, 3 divided by 6 is obviously a half. OK, and you can leave your answer like that. Now let's check this is actually true. Let's underline our answer for the examiner. Let's ch check this is actually true. 4 take away a half is 3.5. 5 times a half is 2.5, plus the 1 would be 3.5. So we know we've done it right, that's our check. Example 5, and um, we've got x's on both sides and a bracket. So, first thing probably to do is expand the bracket. So just tell the examiner what you're doing. You're expanding. So we'd have 6x subtract 2 is equal to 2x plus 2 times 4, which is 8. OK, now we've got x's on both sides and numbers on both sides. Let's deal with the x's to start with. Let's subtract 2x off both sides. So we would get that 4x subtract 2 is equal to 8. And let's add 2 to both sides. So we would get 4x is equal to 8 plus 2, which is 10. Lastly, let's divide by 4 and x would therefore be 10 divided by 4, which if you simplify 10 divided by 4 is 5 over 2, or if you want to decimalise it, 2.5. Now let's check uh, this is actually true. 6 times 2.5 is 15, 15 take away 2 is 13, and in this bracket 2.5 uh, plus 4 is 6.5, 2 times 6.5 is 13. Yes, our checks worked out well correct. Example 7. Um, we've got brackets here and we've got uh, negatives. Th this will confuse students here. So let's have a go at doing this. Using the distributive law, uh, let's expand this bracket. This will be 4 multiplied by x, which is 4x. Take away 4 multiplied by 2, which is 8. Now, this here is subtract. This is subtract everything we get by expanding this here. We're going to subtract everything. So keep that subtract there. Right? And let's keep our brackets there and let's expand this out. 
2 lots of x is 2x and subtract 2 times 1 which is 2. Okay, so now let's perform, and this is equal to 4, sorry. Now let's perform this subtraction. 4x take away 2x is 2x and negative 8 subtract negative 2 which would be negative 8 plus 2 which would be negative 6 would be equal to 4. Let's add 6 to both sides so 2x is equal to 10 and let's divide both sides by 2 x is equal to 5. Let's maybe write it like this so it's not so spread out and then we would check our work. So let's underline our work here. Um, 5 take away 2 is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. So this would be 12 if we substitute back in. Subtract. Um, 5 take away uh, 1 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. So 12 take away 8 is equal to 4. Yes, that's correct. Now, this probably causes students a, a fair bit of uh, difficulty here, this sort of a question, because of all the ne negatives going on. So I'm going to leave x is 5 as the final answer. I might just do it a different way. Sometimes it's done like this. Students might find this easier. Let's distribute this out here. 4x subtract 8. And sometimes... Uh, students are told to think of that as negative 2 multiplying by both of these two things. So negative 2 times x is negative 2x, negative 2 times negative 1 is plus 2 and that is equal to 4. Combining here again 4x subtract 2x is four, uh, 2x and negative 8 add 2 is negative 6 and then you can add so 6 to both sides, so 2x must be 10, and therefore x must be 5. So whichever way works out for you that you prefer. Lastly, uh, another question here. Um, let's have a go at this one. Um, this is saying 3x plus 1 take away x plus 2. So this subtract here is telling you to subtract everything in that bracket. These brackets tell you that the, the expression in here is, is, is an expression um, fully contained within those brackets. So this subtract tells you to subtract everything in that bracket. So if we just rewrite this, this would be 3x plus 1. We want to subtract x and we want to subtract 2. And that will be 5. And then we can just say 3x subtract an x would be equal to 2x and then we can say 1 subtract 2 is negative 1 and this would be equal to 5. Add 1 to both sides we would have that 2x is equal to 6. Divide both sides by 2 we would have x is equal to 3. We would underline our work and we would check. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10, uh, 3 plus 2 is 5, 10 take away 5 is indeed 5 as we were looking for. So we know we've done it right and we've checked it. Now, what a lot of students do here, I'll just do in green pen what a lot of students might do. They would write this as 3x plus 1, subtract x plus 2 is equal to 5. This subtract here is telling you to subtract everything in those brackets. So be sure you don't just combine that, uh, that uh, subtract with the x and you forget to combine it with the 2 as well. Okay, so that's all for uh, simple uh, linear equations for now. Uh, perhaps just one thing, um, how, they, how this sort of a, an equation might actually come up in the GCSE. Well, it might be something like this. This is a typical type of one just to show you how these things come up. Um, it might say that... We have a rectangle, it has the width of 3x plus 1 and it has a height of x plus 2 and it might tell you the difference between the width and the height is 5 centimetres. Okay, it might tell you something like that and it might say therefore 
uh, solve for x. So if the difference is 5, you would say that 3x plus 1, the width, take away x plus 2, is equal to 5. That's how you would generate that equation. Then you would solve it as I've done there. So finally, um, just to say, we've done all simple linear equations there. Do check in for the next video solving linear equations where we have fractions involved that make things slightly harder. And do keep your eye on the YouTube channel or Twitter for more uh, videos to help you with your GCSEs. As requested by Mr Dunkley, um, the final catchphrase is checking out for now and tune in next time.